Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm still Kat. So I'm gonna make a video. I've made a first video on the Bob Saget, uh, death of Bob Saget. I feel like I need to make a second video. There's been a lot of speculation surrounding Bob's death. Um, people are wondering, was he whacked? Was it an accident? And uh, I just want to share my own experience with a similar situation with my mom to kind of put things into perspective about how easily something like this could happen. You know, I've read a lot of comments saying, oh, the, the damage was too extensive for it to be like Bob that did it himself and there's you know there's no hair or blood or anything like that in 2018 I hadn't heard from my mom in a couple of days you know we weren't really getting along at the time so I wasn't like dropping by to check in on her as much as I should my mom's 65 she has mental health issues. She takes medications. Sometimes she over medicates herself. And, uh, I hadn't heard from her in a couple of days. So I have, I got, uh, my sister to call the cops and have the police do a wellness check or a welfare check, whatever it is, whatever you guys refer it to. Uh, it's referred to as a welfare check or a wellness check. You just get the police to go in and, you know, knock on the doors, make sure that everything is okay. They answer the door. They're coherent. They're safe. And when the cops got there, there was no answer. And my mom lives alone. So she doesn't go anywhere very often. She's pretty much a recluse like I am. Shut in all the time. Don't communicate with a lot of people. And, uh, there was no answer. So I gave the police officer permission to boot the door in because I know that, you know, she has a history of suicide attempts. She has a history of falling. She has a history of over medicating. And when the police kicked the door in her apartment looked like it had been turned upside down. It looked like somebody broke in, attacked her, possibly uh, essayed her. And the weirdest place of all, they found her wedged between her mattresses. Like, you know how you have a box spring and a mattress on top of each other? She was wedged in between the two mattresses like you would pull a blanket up over yourself she had somehow gotten underneath the mattress and like pulled her other mattress up over top of her like it was a blanket to this day I'm still not sure if somebody had broken in and uh, essayed her, beat her up for prescriptions, you know, like she is an older lady. At that time, she was taking uh, like Dilaudid and she had lorazepams or diazepams and lots and lots of Seroquel. And she had just had a tattoo by like, a sketchy person a couple of days before that. So, you know, in the back of my mind, I think forever, there will always be that possibility that somebody broke in and attacked her. Uh, like I said, when the police found her, she was in between her mattresses and it had, like, she looked like she had been attacked and I asked I wanted the doctors to do like a rape kit she was when she was found 
she was not in a coma, but so close to a coma that it was like, she was in something like shock, something, 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 something was wrong. Like, so she was taken by an ambulance to the emergency room. And when I say her apartment looked like she had been attacked, like the kitchen table was flipped upside down. There was blood on the floor, not a lot, but there was blood on like spots throughout her apartment. You know, like she has four or five rooms, not bedrooms, but rooms in her apartment. And each room had looked like a separate attack happened in each room. Like there were things upturned, pushed over, like it looked like she had been attacked. So whenever I made it to the hospital, she was just lying like in a fetal position, however a fetal position is, you know, like a fetal position and just moaning and groaning like, uh, 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 when her eyes were closed, like uh, she couldn't, there was, she wasn't making any sense of anything. She was incoherent. It was like, the, she was not there. She was gone to, in another dimension or something. And, uh, so she got shipped to a city. Like I live in a small rural town. So our hospital is not like a city hospital or that we don't have like neurologists. And at that time, I don't think that we had a CT scan or an MRI equipment or anything like that at our hospital. So she got shipped to the Ottawa General Hospital where they have, you know, like neurologists and shit that can check her out and be positive that what was going on inside her head. Uh, and as I mentioned, she does take, you know, Seroquel and stuff like that. And it was, I don't know how many days before she had that she hadn't taken her Seroquel. She sat in the hospital for three days in this state of coma, but not a coma. It was like she was there, but not there. She couldn't, she had a catheter in, she wasn't going to the bathroom. Um, she wasn't moving. She was just lying in her bed, moaning, like calling out, but not making any coherence in language. It was the strangest freaking thing I've ever experienced in my life. Like very, 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 very scary. Like to see your mom like that, it's almost traumatizing, you know, like my one sister couldn't even deal with it. She couldn't even deal with it. She didn't like, she couldn't even deal with it. She didn't want to be at the hospital. She didn't, she can deal with it. She can't deal with stuff like that. So they did a brain scan and stuff on her. And the doctor said that what happened was she either had a stroke or a brain bleed. A brain bleed, I believe, is an aneurysm or like an embola, like a blood clot that bursts. And when that happens in your head, it you, your brain tries to protect itself or it's like going through like zzz, 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 some sort of like shock waves bouncing off this, you know, like something is happening inside your brain where it be like pressure or your brain is bleeding. And from that happening caused her to go into such a state of confusion that she didn't know where she was. So 
she apparently, like, nobody was there. So this is just speculation, in which I'm speculating about what happened to Bob as well. She just went from room to room, like, flailing about. You know, like, if you're flailing about, not knowing, like, your equilibrium is off and your balance is all screwed up. You're, like, knocking into walls or a dresser you know you fall head first like that into a dresser or your kitchen counter or your stove you can hit your head so frigging hard and it like it won't bust the skin it'll leave like you might get a bruise and like if you go to bed and you die post mortem impressions like that aren't going to show up on a dead person the same way that they show up on a living person. So the damage that you would see in your cranial area wouldn't show up if you're like to a dead person. It would show up like do you ever see like a, a cow leg or a pig leg when the butcher chops it like that? Like you don't see blood squirt, squirting out or like, and to like, to put that into a different perspective, like I know I'm getting really off track here. I can see from my own experience with my mother and that happening, I can see Bob having like the same thing, like going up. And it's unfortunate that if the cops picked things up or moved, like if there was a chair turned over, if there was, like if something happened in the bathroom, there's not really, like I've seen the body cam footage, there wasn't, like, it was a clean bathroom. So it's, there wasn't really anything for him to trip over in there, other than, you know, if there was a, a puddle of water, he could have tripped and fell and hit his head on the marble countertop. And that would do damage in the frontal lobe area, maybe possibly creating the frontal damage that could cause the brain bleed, cause the stroke to happen. And then he goes out to another part of the air, part of the hotel room, not knowing that he's in this confused state or have a brain bleed or a stroke. And he's going about his hotel room, flailing into walls or you know, tripping over this, bumping into that. I'm not saying that he wasn't attacked, like he very well could have been whacked. I'm just, I know from experience that a brain bleed and a stroke or embolism can cause you to act differently, incoherently than what you would be if you were lucid and coherent and then like my mom you just you go get into bed like if Bob got into bed pulled his covers up and went to bed like everything was fine that to me is quite possible be just because I've experienced that same situation with my own mom now I want to give a story to another crime. A, this was an actual crime. A son wanted to kill his mother and father. So he shot his mother in the head, shot his father in the head in the middle of the night, like when they were sleeping. And the father got hit in the head in such a way that even though like 
half of his head was missing from the gunshot, the father still got up and went about his morning like any every, every other morning that he would go about, you know. He went to the driveway, got his newspaper, dripped blood all the way down the driveway, all the way back up the driveway. The man prepared his lunch for work that day, prepared himself for work that day, got everything together as he was, as he would for work, and then finally succumbed to his injuries, like in the foyer of his own house. All the while, dripping blood, making it look like an absolute horror scene throughout the whole entire house. I do believe the mother survived. I, I'm not sure. The mother or the father survived that and like took the son's side, like forgave the son afterwards. Like the brain and the body is such a resilient organ. Like it's uncomprehensible comprehensible like how resilient our brain and body is like it's amazing what what like what we can put our body and stuff through and have it either heal itself or like that story you just go about your whole entire day as if everything is normal until finally the injury just takes you out. Like you bleed out or your brain just, you don't have enough oxygen or blood in your body anymore for your brain to still function. So it is entirely possible that something similar like that happened to Bob. I don't, I'm not trying to take away from the idea that perhaps he was taken out, you know, money changes people. And we who have lived with Bob in our lives since he graced our television with Full House, we were not owed anything, but we feel as his fans were given a right to some sort of closure. You know, like his family has court documents sealed. Why? Why? What's the purpose? Do, do they not want closure? Like they just want to put it away in a box and forget about it and spend his a hundred million dollars. Like, I don't think it works quite like that. Like, there's so many answers that need to be exposed, whether it be exposed for the right reasons or the wrong reasons. If something did happen to Bob, whereas it be simply a stroke or a brain bleed or an aneurysm, embolism, um, his fans and his other family and loved ones, his friends, deserve to know. Like, I just, I wanted to put it into perspective for you guys. I know a lot of people are saying it's too much head trauma for him to be able to make it to bed. It's so suspicious. The family wants this to go away. And it needs to be investigated further. And it's just, it brings me back always to the story about my mom. Of how she lied in her bed between her mattresses for two or three days. I don't know if it happened Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. I didn't call the cops to do the wellness check until Saturday afternoon, like two o'clock in the afternoon. And by then she had already developed a bed sore, like the size of a silver dollar on her backside right here, where you know, to me, 
it looked like somebody, like she had been kicked. You know, like when you're looking at this with love in your eyes, it's so hard not to imagine that somebody did this to them. You want answers and that just the natural death answers is not enough. It's not enough. You want somebody to be blamed, somebody to take responsibility. Somebody has to pay for what happened. And it's not always as easy as just cut and dry and put away in a drawer like that. It's a lot of the time there's mystery surrounding what goes on in death. And uh, us as logical thinking beings, as we are, we want answers, cut dry answers, not like, oh, it could be this, or oh, it could be that, or oh, it could be a hundred things, but it wasn't that. We want answers. And I think that we, the people, deserve the answers. That's just how I feel. That's what I think. That's my opinion surrounding the Bob Saget saga. So not everybody's going to agree with it. Not everybody has dealt with their mom having a stroke, a brain bleed, and an aneurysm. So if you don't know, you don't know. Like, there's nothing shameful of being ignorant in that aspect of science and stuff like that. We just, if it's not clear to you and it looks like they were beaten up and friggin' taken out, well, frig, man, that's what it looks like to our, to our logical thinking eye. You got marks all over your body. Like how can one person flail themselves to the front and the back? Like how can you damage the front and the back? Well, it's easy. You can trip over something one way, knock yourself out, get up, be like confused, knock yourself out again, fall backwards, and you're not using your hands to save yourself. So when you fall back, like you're banging your head, you banged your head on the front already. That's your frontal lobe. Now you're banging yourself on the back and that's like logic and thinking and stuff like that. So you're delirious you go get in bed and you die that's that's like that's the cut and dry put away pasting part of it it's unfortunate but that's sometimes the expense of being by ourselves we're alone i've sometimes thought that you know i know that something happened to me i don't know if i had a stroke or a seizure, something from taking medications prescribed from my psychiatrist did something in there. And now I'm left confused and trying to explain to my doctor that something happened <laughs> and they don't believe me. So that's just, you know, like when you're alone, you just got to take the shit sometimes. So let me know what you think about that. I'm going to end it. It's like 30, 23, 24 minutes now of blabbering on about Bob Saget and my mom. So love you guys. You can agree to disagree. Come find me on my socials on Instagram. It's katiecat077. Like, comment, subscribe. And if you didn't like this, if you're a hater, send this video to your hater. And uh, hopefully that's two minutes of their life that they'll never get back. Until next time. Love you guys, and I'll see ya in my next video. Bye!